guys, how you doing? It's Rabia, hope you're all good today. So you may have noticed sat to my left here is an absolute behemoth of awesome guitar tone. I am sat next to the Friedman BE100D, which stands for Deluxe. So this is the Brown Eye 100 Deluxe from Friedman Amplification. So we all know who Dave Friedman is and Friedman Amps, they've been around for years now and they do some of the best the sort of high gain hard rock, classic rock guitar amps that you can get your hands on. They're all built in the US, in uh, LA, and they're just awesome. So we all know the BE100, that was their flagship model that they've had out for a few years and it's just high gain laid and awesome just it just sounds great. If you've ever heard one in the flesh, you'll know exactly what I mean. They just, they have a great sound. So the BE100 Deluxe is a continuation of that. So you get all the same goodies that you get with the BE100, but now you get a bunch of other switching and a few extra different things that really do set this amplifier apart from the rest of the range. So I want to breeze over this and I want to show you some of the differences in sound when we get into the amplifier demo itself. But I do want to make sure that this video isn't really, really long because there's so much to cover. But what we've got with the BE100 Deluxe is we've got, uh, well, it's a two channel amp, but I, I like to think of it like three because you've got a clean channel and then you've got your gain channels and you've got two gain channels with independent masters. So you can switch between those. You've got the BE and the HBE. So that's the brown eye and the hairy brown eye, which you've got on channel two. So really it's a two channel amp, but I, I like to think of it like you've got clean, then you've got crunch, then you've got high gain. And with all of that, you've got loads of different switches that change the characteristics of those tones. So as you can see from the close-ups, we've got a clean channel with its own EQ, gain and volume. And as you can see, there's a little bright switch, toggle switch there, uh, which you can really use to your advantage, depending on the guitar you use or the, the style of clean you like. Then we move over to the gain channels. You've got gains one and two with their own masters and a shared EQ. But then underneath there, you can see on the toggle switches, you've got a voicing switch, which acts like a high pass filter. So you've got two degrees of sort of uh, reduction in high end. Beyond the gain channels, you've got your master presence. You've got thump, which is another sort of term for depth or resonance. And then you've got system volume, which is a global master volume. As well as those controls, you've got a couple of toggle switches. The first one being response. That affects the negative feedback of the amplifier, uh, essentially changing the feel overall. On top of that, we've also got a frequency toggle switch for our thump control. So that's really useful, and you can really hear this if you turn it all the way up and then move the toggle switch. You can hear that it affects different areas of the mid ranges. So it's like a high mid, a mid, and then a low mid. If that wasn't enough tweaking on the front panel, round on the back of the amplifier, there is a load of other little toggle switches, which again, hugely affect the feel and sound of this amplifier. First, we've got a couple of fat switches, one for the clean channel, one for the dirty channel. So kind of self-explanatory, but if you're using like a Strat, and you want to beef it up, you can throw those on. Then we've got a C45 switch. This was common on some of the other amplifiers, the Friedman BE100. It's a different voice overall, gives a little bit more low end, a little bit more gain. It smoothens out the top end. It's just a different character of the amp. So again, some people really enjoyed that. So it's nice that they put this on the amplifier. Next up, we've got a saturation switch. This adds another clipping stage. Um, you'll notice a little drop in volume because obviously with more clippings, more compression, the overall level of everything comes down a bit, which you can ride with the volumes again. Or you could use something like the response switch to mess with the negative feedback and counteract that dip in volume, opening it out in a different way. Again, it's another tone tweaking tool. And lastly, we've got gain structure. This is one of my favorite switches on the amp because you can change the overall gain staging of the amplifier to feel more like a JCM 800 in its lowest gain structure mode or you can take it up a notch and it becomes a little bit more contemporary or you can go all the way up to the highest of the gain structure which is where the BE100 naturally sat and where this one you can get all the gain that you want in the amplifier and, and really go to town. And of course on the back panel you've obviously got your speaker out with your impedance selector between 4, uh, 8 and 16 ohms. You've got a fantastic effects loop and you've also got a foot switch. This thing can be co uh, controlled with foot switching to control your channels, etc. My gut feeling with this amp is that not only does it do classic rock, hard rock, you know, rock and roll and shreddy stuff, but I think it's gonna have a fair hand in some really dirty, heavy tones. I'm not saying like gent, progressive metal, but I do think you'll be able to get some like Mastodon heavy, riffy, dirty tones. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna jump in and take a listen to the Friedman BE100 Deluxe. Okay, let's crack on. So just to give you an idea of signal chain, the Friedman's going straight into the Ox box from Universal Audio. I'm um, using a V30 model uh, and I figured we'll start on the clean channel with the Strat. 
And I just want to show you the fat switch and the bright switch and just what kind of gain levels we can get from the clean channel as well. So here we go. This is the sound of the Strat straight in. Fat switch isn't engaged. Clean channel, everything at 12. So it sounds really good, straight up clean. Um, and it, you can hear this harmonic content there because there's a bit of a chime. Not touched anything so far. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the bright switch. So let's just play an A minor. First stage of brightness. And more brightness. You can hear it starting to push now. Before I do anything else, we're using the bright switch on full. I'm going to throw on the fat switch, the clean fat switch, and you'll hear just how much that changes the low end response of this amp. And now with the fat switch engaged. Let me take that back out. Back in again. So it's a nice an amount of low end support. Hopefully you can hear that. It just warms everything up a bit. keep playing for hours I can feel that the response for me like just the way the clean channel feels right now it's really good take off the delay right so next let me show you what happens when you gun the game Oh, it feels great. It sounds great. It's got a really nice sort of bite to it, which I really enjoy. But that's the clean channel. So we've not even touched the gain channels at all or any of the other switches um, because I think they're a little bit more obvious what they do with gain. But it's nice to know that you can really get like classic hard rock tones with the clean channel. But before we move on, I may as well just plug the Les Paul in so you can hear the level of that because I think a Les Paul, it'd be rude not to with a Plexi style channel, wouldn't it?
Seriously, I really like that channel. If this amp was just that channel, I think I'd just enjoy it. Just, it's fine. That's all I need. Because, you know, you could put pedals in front of that. It would definitely work. On top of that, with a Strat and a Les Paul, it just sounded really damn good. And it gave me that classic rock, like hard rock vibe. Uh, it sounded so good with the Les Paul. So I'm really happy with the clean channel. But let's move on to gain one and two. <laughs> Next, what I'm going to do is show you the response. So in the middle, the, it, the response is what controls the negative feedback. So in the middle, it's kind of untainted, if that makes sense. You really hear it in the top there. It's like a sizzle. So if I go to the left, uh, sorry, if I go to the right, this is the BE100 response. Back to the middle. So uh, in the BE position, uh, it's a bit more raw, sort of low mid raw. And the top's a lot smoother. And then if we go to the left. That definitely affects the high end mostly, but it's also changed the feel, obviously the response of, of the amp. So it's, it's quite interesting. Next up is the thump. So I'm gonna turn, the thump is currently set to the middle, which is like a roaring mid range. So if we take it all the way out. Back to halfway. And then all the way up. swiftly on to gain two. We'll stick with the Les Paul for now. Um, but what I want to show you is the difference in gain when you're jumping between those two channels. Um, in terms of the toggle switches along the front, they affect gain two in the same way of gain one in, in terms of like they do the same job. However, they do affect the overall sound differently because it's a different gain stage. So anyway, let me demonstrate. We're currently at halfway on gain one. Response is back in the middle and the thump control is currently affecting the mid-range. But this is just game one at halfway. Now if we go to the HBE channel at quarter. The mid start to jump out a bit more and you can hear it's a little more saturated but roughly similar ballpark for the gain. So what I'm going to do is push the gain to halfway.
to do is change uh, the Les Paul out, as good as it sounds, for my silo loaded signature. So that's more modern contemporary. So we can see how the higher gain stuff will be handled with this. Okay, I'll plug the relic straight in. The settings haven't changed from where the Les Paul was. This is what we're dealing with. So let's put the, res that sounds insane, but we'll put the response switch over to the B side. I think that sounds better with this guitar. Then I'm gonna put the frequency of the thump to pull out a little low mid flub. great it feels great so what I want to do now is show you what some of the switches on the back do um, so to do that I'm gonna to go to gain one I'm gonna put the gain at halfway uh, gonna keep it in the BE response territory this is what we're dealing with currently cold split down So next up, let's play with the gain structure. It's currently in the highest gain position, uh, highest. So what I'm gonna do is take it to the sort of the medium, if you wanna call it that, and then we'll try it in the low position. So this is the highest at gain one and halfway. So now we're in the medium gain position. So you can hear it's dropped quite a bit, and now we'll put it in the middle position. Let's put the response switch back in the middle. Sounds great. Um, so what am I gonna do now? Let's put the thump switch to high mid and push it a bit. So it's thickened that mid-range up nicely. So what I'm gonna do now is push the gain. So it's at three, just over three quarters. If you want to run this amp wide open, you could put it in the lowest gain structure and gun gain too, and then you'd be able to further boost that for leads, but listen to this. I love the way this amp roars. <clears throat> it just has a roar to it, as you can hear. Something I was talking about on that pedal show, this does it. Um, okay. So you've heard what the gain structure does. For the sake of the demo, I'm gonna put it back in highest because that's where I wanna put it. Now let's throw on the saturation switch.
that was awesome. The saturation switch, as I said, it adds more clipping, but you counteract that by just turning it up um, and just messing with the response a little bit, doing that kind of thing. So having it in the BE response position, having the thump in the high mid position with that extra clipping stage, it was just 80s shred metal riffage galore for me. That was definitely where it was at. And uh, it really makes this guitar not sound very modern. It's got a modern edge to it, but way less so than other amplifiers. So. Yeah, it's absolutely killer. So what I want to do now is show you the C45 switch. What I'm doing is I'm just noodling around to hear how it feels different. And to me, it's like you get more sustain. You get a little more sustain, a little more openness in that sort of high mid range. So I'm just gonna play a quick lick and then I'll get John to A, B them back to back. It's like more sustain, a little bit more open areas in the high mid range and yeah it just is a sweeter sound i think that's a really nice mod uh, for leads it feels really good on leads um out of curiosity i'm just going to team that up with something high gain for riffing and see if that gives us a little bit more of an edgy sound it might do or it might be a little bit more squished so let's try that now <laughs> For me, this feels like it's a lead support mod. So you put this on for when you want the leads or, or you know, you like the way that it responds to lead because it sounds like it opens things up, adds more sustain. So it goes into that rich harmonic feedback thing a little bit easier. Um, this guitar has a sweet spot around the seventh fret B string. So I'm gonna try that. Obviously, if I have a cab in the room, it would just jump straight in. But even so on little studio monitors in my room here, not very loud, it still wants to do it. Well, let's see if that happens. So that's really cool. That was not as apparent when I didn't have the C45 switch pushed in. So it's really nice. Like it just, you can hear it starts to ring over. If that was going through a four by 12 in the room, that would just carry on for days. So that's awesome. Well then, I think it would be rude not to say how awesome this amplifier sounds in this video. You know, honestly, I'm really, really loving this amplifier. I, th for me, this answers when I want to use my Les Paul and I want a classic sort of Marshall kind of vibe, obviously I have a JVM, but that's not a classic Marshall sort of vibe. This Friedman BE100 Deluxe will get me way closer to that hard rock, classic rock, JCM800, dirty LA riffage with the Les Paul, with a Strat than, than that amplifier would have done. But on top of that, there are so many different things you can tweak on this amplifier to really change the vibe. I love the C45 mod. I love the saturation switch because it does just give you that extra push if you want it there. I absolutely love the clean channel. I love that you can gun the gain and the volume and get a proper wide open plexi tone. For me, that is the shining gem of this amplifier. That clean channel is just wonderful, especially with my Les Paul and my Strat. Um, it handles high gain, it handles riffage, it handles shred. It just sounds, you know what it is? It just sounds like you've cranked a really awesome hot rodded Marshall full on, it's roaring through a 4x12. It's just giving you everything that you want, the support, the girth, the feel, the attitude. Just, yeah, really, really impressed. And to be fair, it's a really expensive amplifier, so you'd expect it to make you feel good when you play it, because it is, you know, somewhere in the regions of, I think, around three and a half, four thousand pounds, something like that. So it's a proper investment. 
But in my opinion, if you were in the market for an amp that was going to see you through thick and thin, whether it be, you know, chill music, hard rock, classic rock, metal, anything like that, this will definitely do it with style. That's the thing that I like the most about it. It's got a lot of attitude just in the way it is. Um, anyway, can you tell I'm a fan of this amplifier? I really like it. I highly recommend you try it out, if nothing else. You just need to get yourself to a music store, try this bad boy out with a Les Paul, with a Strat, with something modern, so you can really hear how much different tones you can get out of it. But yeah, thank you to Stefan for arranging this video to happen uh, and for sending it over. Uh, thank you all for watching this video. Like, subscribe and share, and I will see you all very soon.